The scripture that I'm sharing with all of you tonight is Psalm 25, 3, and it says, Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. And I like the way the message translation says it because it sounds like the way David would have would have talked to the Lord. He was um, very straightforward and and uh, uh, just uh, had such a personal relationship with the Lord. I think he probably would have said it this way. I've thrown in my lot with you. You won't embarrass me, will you? Or let my enemies get the best of me. Don't embarrass any of us who went out on a limb for you, Lord. It's the traitors who should be humiliated. Now, doesn't that sound like David? Well, have you ever gone out on a limb for God with your faith? Or are you waiting on an answer from him? Have you been waiting and waiting and, and, and don't see the answer? I sure have. I know how that feels. Well, David was waiting on God, even though he was facing enemies and deceitful people. Waiting is not easy, that's for sure, especially in our culture. You know, we get fast food, we, uh, we order online, and we expect our package to be on our doorstep the next morning or the next day, and we even, even our food we put in the microwave and expect it to be done in just a few seconds. And that's the way our culture is. But Lamentations 3.25 says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. So we should never, ever be ashamed of waiting on the Lord. But sometimes we wait and wait and we don't see the answers. I, just, I heard it said that time is God's way of keeping everything from happening at the same time. <laughs> so God doesn't necessarily show us what is on the road ahead, but the Holy Spirit will always thoroughly equip us for the journey. And God is not subject to time. Time is subject to God. This is God's world. He made it and he controls it. I heard an example the other day about, and if, and if you're from the Charlotte area, you'd be very familiar with this, sitting and waiting on a freight train to go by. How often we sit and we wait and we wait on these long freight trains and we, my husband has a, a habit of counting the cars. It's like a game with him. And um, I think his highest number was 165 one time. But we wait and we wait and we, we can't see the engine. We can't see the caboose. We can see maybe one, two, maybe three cars. And if we think of those cars as days of our lives, and they just, they just keep going by and going by. Well, if we were up above a thousand feet looking down, we could see the engine, we could see the caboose, we could see what was in between. We could even see the car that we're sitting in. And that's the way God looks at us. It looks at our lives and looks at our days. So he sees the beginning and the end. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. This is how the Lord views your life, and he can step in and out of it as he wills. Now let's talk about shame. When we don't see answers to our prayers, the enemy wants us to feel shame. To be ashamed means to be disappointed in our actions or to be embarrassed. Shame doesn't come from God. We know that. It comes straight from the pits of, of hell. But shame is just a feeling, and feelings lie. Feelings can even paralyze us. We feel shame for different reasons. Sometimes we feel shame for, because of our past lives. We feel shame because of something we should have done and we didn't do or something we did do and shouldn't have done. Well, when Jesus purchased our salvation at the cross, 
our salvation not only includes eternal life, but includes victory over sin, sickness, disease, and torment. Shame is torment. Shame is a curse, and we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. But we have to remember that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And Isaiah tells us, and listen to this because this is a wow scripture. In Isaiah 61, the Lord tells us, Instead of our shame, we shall have double honor. That just blows my mind to think that God took our shame and gave us double honor. And I'm reminded of the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel. Hannah's heart's desire was to have a baby, a son. But God closed her womb. And the Bible said that Hannah had anguish of soul. She was so sad. She was so uh, just disappointed. And, and um, her, well, her husband had two wives. But Hannah was his favorite. And Hannah's other wife taunted Hannah. His other wife had had several children with him. And she taunted Hannah, and she made fun of her and ridiculed her and, and just made Hannah feel so ashamed. And her husband loved her so much, and, and she was definitely his favorite, but he was a little arrogant. Her husband saw her crying, and he said, Why do you weep? After all, you have me. And he said, aren't I better than 10 sons? Well, that wasn't the answer that Hannah was looking for. She wanted her own child, her own baby to love. So every year, the family would go up to the temple to worship God and sac give sacrifices and offerings. And Hannah would go along, and so would um, uh, her husband's other wife and and uh, they would go up there, and Hannah would go especially to pray, to pray and ask God to give her a son. Well, when it came time for her husband to give his offering, his sacrifice, he would give his other wife and children each a portion. But when he came to Hannah, he gave her a double portion. And that's such a picture of God's love. He loved Hannah so much that he did not want her to feel ashamed, and he gave her a double portion. But you know what? In God's perfect timing, he gave Hannah a son, the son that she wanted, and he fulfilled the desires of her heart. And she honored God by giving, back, giving her son back to him. Her son's name was Samuel. He, he ended up being one of, the, one of, if not the greatest prophet in the Bible. In fact, it was Samuel who anointed David king. Wow. <laughs> That's God's timing. So David said, Let no one who waits on you be ashamed, Lord. Let those be ashamed who are careless and reckless who deal with us without regard for what is right. Are you waiting for a breakthrough or an answer from God? Maybe it's salvation of, of your loved ones, of your children. Or maybe it's a breakthrough in your marriage or a financial breakthrough, a breakthrough in ministry or a breakthrough in another relationship. Well, Eli the priest blessed Hannah and said to her, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. When he blessed Hannah, her whole countenance changed. She received that blessing. She no longer had a sad face. Her faith was encouraged, and she could now wait with confidence in what God was going to do. And I'd like to pray for all of you tonight. And if we could just bow our heads right now, and, and I want to pray. You know, Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. 
God, I pray for everyone listening to this message who have been waiting for a breakthrough or an answer from you, Lord, that they would rejoice in Jesus and all that he did for them when he went to the cross for us. Jesus is our confident hope. I pray that they would be patient in trouble and keep on praying, believing, and trusting you, Lord. I pray that you, God, the source of hope, will fill them completely with joy and peace because they trust in you. Then they will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you have already removed their shame, and I pray that a double portion of honor will be manifest and evident in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, I encourage you to receive the blessing from God's word, this blessing from God's word, and, and wait, just wait confidently on God to answer your prayers and, and bring that breakthrough that you're you so desire in your heart. And I want to bless you with the same blessing that Eli the priest said over Hannah. And I just encourage you at home just to, to lift your hands to God and receive this blessing now in the name of Jesus. May you go in peace and the God of Israel, the God of your salvation, will grant your petition which you have asked of him. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening, and God bless each and every one of you. Good night.